now it's going to be tested. Mac T back, folks, and I'm back again with another fantastic oil testing. But first, let me tell you about Mac T Ford Edge on YouTube. That's right. Go to this link and subscribe to this channel. That's right. Go and hit that subscribe button. And there's a PayPal there. If you want to donate to help pay for these, just keep in mind these tests are expensive. They cost me anywhere from $40, $50 per test, including the purchase of the oil and everything else going there, lab fees, all this other stuff. So uh, if you can help support and uh, take care of some of the costs, that would be great. That's why I don't do as many as I can because I just don't have the funds to cover all the testing. So if you want, hit that PayPal link you see right here and also subscribe and watch these videos. That being said, we do have the Shell Rotella. That's right, SU gas truck and SUV. That is the oil we're going to be testing. As we can see, I did the test on the 5W30. I have went to a 5W30 in my engine to test this oil and also to take care of maybe a little bit of oil usage when I was running the 20s. Uh, and that's a whole nother ball game right there, but uh, I'm checking it out. So far, decent results. Uh, the five quart Rotella does run about $25.99 at Blaine's Farm and Fleet where I bought it. You might get it for a different price or something like that elsewhere, but that is what I ran it with. And I always use the Pure Later Boss filter for all my testing to keep everything on the level. That's right. Other thing I want to let you know is if you want entertainment purposes for your oil testing like uh, here you put it in your freezer okay I don't know about you guys but you know I don't put my car in the freezer I do have it outside in the winter time so you know it does have the heating and cooling heating and cooling but freezing an oil one time what does that tell you it doesn't tell you much but real world test results are what you're looking for also, what I don't do is I don't put it on a hot plate and put it in a coffee pot and heat it up one time. That's not science. That's science fiction. That ain't scientific. Because how many times do you heat your oil up when you run it through your car? Exactly. You don't heat it up once and then call it a day. You heat it up thousands of times. So let's keep the coffee pot with the coffee cup and just keep it going that direction we're going to be better off but you know those tests are theatrics they are not going to tell you what your oil does and what i tell you is what the lab tells you your oil is this is a virgin oil analysis on the uh, shell rotella gas truck and suv and i am currently running it in both of my cars so i will have the used oil analysis under real world conditions but let's first go see what this Shell Rotella has for it, going for it, and also what does the lab say? Well, the lab says uh, they've noticed that it's been on the market here a bit, and this is the first test they've ran on it. So uh, they said it's a pretty uh, uh, normal oil, nothing exceptional to it. Now, I will note that it is also an SN+, Plus, and... Uh, that is something that is totally different. Now the TBN, you know, nothing outstanding there either. But it is a serviceable 5W30. Now as far as what we got, we got the aluminum. At one part per million universally it is one. We have the chromium, which is at zero. Universally it is zero. Uh, the iron has one part per million. Iron universally it meets the spec there, one. Copper is zero, which is a good starting point. We don't want any copper to start off. Uh, lead, it does have one part per million lead. I don't see that too often, but we do have lead in this sample. Tin, we have zero it, as far as tin universally and for this test sample. Uh, molybdenum, that's right. We have 132 parts per million with the universal average is about 64 parts per million for most oils. Nickel is zero. We have manganese at zero, we have silver at zero, and we have zero titanium additive in this oil, along with zero potassium. Now, the average is about five universally uh, for the potassium. 
Uh, boron, we have 76 parts per million, and the average universally is 80. Uh, silicon, we don't want a lot of silicon in there because that indicates other issues. But uh, we're at four parts per million, which is pretty decently low. Universal average says four parts per million. Our sodium is at one part per million, and universally it is 38, so it's a low sodium oil. Now, calcium is 1,056 parts per million, which brings it way lower. Now, keep in mind, this is an SN+, and you're going to start seeing lower levels of these additives because it has to meet the SN+. So, uh, universally, it's 1,786 parts per million. So, uh, we are definitely lower on the, you know, you know, calcium and everything else that goes with that. Uh, magnesium is 409. It is a bit higher than the universal average of 117. Phosphorus is 566, which brings it much lower than the universal average of 678. And zinc. Zinc is 685. Universal average is 790. Now this is all because this oil is an SN plus oil. Barium, of course, is zero. Now, when we start talking about our SUS viscosity, 210 degrees Fahrenheit, this oil runs in at 60.1, which puts it smack dab pretty much in the middle as far as its viscosity. The CST viscosity is 10.25, which puts it uh, about smack dab in the middle there of the uh, viscosity index, as you can see here. The flash point is remarkably high. It's at three, 450 degrees. Uh, which is decent, but then again, remember, this is a 5W30, but you want something over 410. There is no fuel, there is no antifreeze in this oil, there is no water, there is no insolubles, and we have a TBN of 6.7. Now, keep in mind, 6.7 is a pretty low TBN, and what I'm seeing as a general rule is that the TBNs for a lot of these SN Plus oils are not climbing really high. So uh, there's a whole another issue going on right there with the TBNs. This SN Plus, you know, is trying to meet certain goals and the TBN is falling because of it. So you got to be careful about what you, you know, want to use. And, and if you use up your TBN over your oil change, then of course that's a non-starter. Now, Shell Rotella Gas Truck, their marketing information says it protects your truck under extreme conditions and temperatures, and it outperforms conventional motor oil in severe driving conditions. Towing, rugged terrain, all this other stuff. Provides unsuppressed wear protection, and uh, it is protection for both older and newer trucks. Um, keeps the engine clean. And I'm going to say with the calcium content and a few other things missing, I'm not so sure that's a good good starter there for that. But uh, it prevents sludge and other damage. Well, it is a synthetic, so that does help. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm saying, I don't know. We're going to have to see what the used oil test results say. Uh, it's got a synthetic base oil for added oxidation and stability and improve volatility low temperature product. Now, uh, synthetic base oil, probably uh, just a group three oil. That's all we're gonna say about that. And it protects your horsepower. Now, I'm not sure how they're coming about this protecting horsepower thing, but who knows? You know, I, you know, er, I ran many, many oils through my engines. I'm not gonna say any one of them's giving me more horsepower. But anyway, they, they sell it in the various weights, 0, 020, 520, and 530. Uh, now, as far as what they're you know, classifying this again, it meets and exceeds all requirements of the uh, ISLEC GF5, API SN+, and API SN in all previous categories. It meets Chrysler, Ford, GM, uh, Dexos, Gen2, uh, licensing, and everything else. Now, what they're converting, you know, they're comparing this to is conventional oil. They're not comparing their uh, gas truck SUV oil to synthetics. They're comparing it to conventional oils. This is what all their marketing says. So, you know, you can take that with a grain of salt, but if, you know, if you got to compare your oil to a conventional oil to make it look good, 
that ought to be a big red flag for you. So I'm just telling you, this is what they're putting out. This is directly from their website, and uh, I'm not so sure that uh, we're going to have real good results, but hey, I'm uh, three quarters of the way through my test, so we'll find out. Now, the price is rather competitive to other similar brands of uh, Group 3 oils. Uh, my testing, like I said, will determine what it is and how it is handling because I have one vehicle all city driving and another vehicle is all highway driving using the Shell Rotella 5W30 on a 3.54 Duratec engine in both vehicles. The SN Plus oil has a low TBN and low additives. And keep in mind, like I said, the SN Plus oils will all have low additives. So if you're looking for more additives, SN Plus probably is not your answer to what you're looking for. But you should always follow your owner's manual as far as your oil changes and driving conditions. And most of us, as you know, I've already said, drive severe driving conditions. So also pay attention to that. Now, what did I come up with the lab? The total anti-wear parts per million was 1,383 and the detergents were 1,541 for a grand total of 2,923. I have started a database based on uh, this for the SN Plus oils in the 5W30 category that I will be putting and posting up on MacTGarage.com, my website where I have all the oil testing and everything posted as far as the lab results and comparativeness of other oils to that same category of oil. But I'm going to tell you right now, I did this test and I've also tested other ones and it's not looking good for the Rotella in the competition of TBN and total combined additives. So uh, we'll see how it wears. But uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I do know there are better oils out there than this one. But uh, will it do the job is the question, and I'm going to assume it does. My TBN testing at the end will tell me what it is. But stand by, because I do have the Shell Rotella gas truck pitted against a couple other oils. So we're going to take and see where it stands as we go through this testing of this SN Plus oil availability and uh, see what it does. Now they're trying to protect all your cars from this LSPI which happens to be related to turbocharged engines. That's right. Uh, there's problems with a uh, buildup and everything and valves and all this other stuff. So this SN Plus is part of that as part of the pre-detonation issues. The oil leaking down into the cylinders and causing all sorts of problems. Uh, knock and all this other things going on with the uh, turbocharged engines. So that's why the SN Plus is coming about and uh, that's why we're seeing these additives reduced because they've related them and correlated them to the LSPI issue which uh, we'll probably address later but right now this Shell Rotella gas truck and SUV is in my cars and we're gonna have the used oil analysis. I have about another I think 90 hours to go and then I'll be able to at least start one test. The other car will take a much longer time to reach the final city driving limit that I have set. But either way, all my testing ends when I'm a quart low, no matter what miles I have and uh, we'll go from there. So hopefully this oil can make it to the end run of 250 hours without me doing it. I do never add another quart of oil to my oil. If it gets a quart low, that is when the test ends and I give you a true test rather than bolstering it up with a fresh quart of the oil to skew the test results. So unlike some other oil testing companies that add oil when they need more oil, that skews the test results. I want to know what it ran like, the evaporation rate, and the viscosity when I actually needed to add. So that's how my testing ends. But this is Mac T. Remember, like, subscribe, Mac T Ford Edge on YouTube. Also, make sure you go to the Facebook group, Mac T Ford Edge on Facebook. It is the number one largest, most active Ford Edge Facebook group you could ever be in. And I know it is because people say it is. So uh, join up on there. Also, Mac T Garage on Facebook and also Mac T Garage on YouTube. Go there, subscribe, help me get that channel going as far as monetization. 
and I get paid nothing in that channel so I'm just trying to build it up to subscribers I'm lacking about another 380 subscribers then I can get that thing monetized eventually but uh, if you want to help donate hit the blue PayPal button on the front page of Mac T Ford Edge on YouTube and also on Mac T Garage on YouTube hit that PayPal help keep the whole thing running help pay for these oil tests and uh, keep me going in these so Anyway, my fee hit the floor today. I'm having a great day, and I want you to have a great day, too. Band of One's got some great music following on, and Mercy Grill's got a couple one-liners for you. Thank you for watching MacT's videos, and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Grill production.